गुड मॉर्निंग फ्रेंड्स नमस्कार हेलो एंड वेलकम माय नेम भुवन अपूर्व झा दिस इज द इंडियन एक्सप्रेस एक्सप्लेन्ड वेयर वी टेक अ लुक एट द आर्टिकल्स दैट मैटर एंड मोर इम्पॉर्टेंटली वी टेक अ लुक एट द क्वेश्चंस दैट कम आउट ऑफ दोज आर्टिकल्स ओके सो फॉर दोज ऑफ यू हु वर इन माय हैव बीन जॉइन विथ मी हैव बीन कनेक्टेड विथ मी इन माय टेलीग्राम चैनल आई हैड इन्फॉर्म यू वेल दैट वी आर गोइंग टू लुक एट अ वेरी इम्पॉर्टेंट टॉपिक टूडे and more importantly we'll also understand the connotations of that topic in terms of trade and commerce and say the global implications of that okay so i suggest uh, it's a it's a very important uh, discussion that we are going to have in the next say 40 45 odd minutes stand by and pay attention all right we visit sheshmani good morning guys thank you for joining all of you meanwhile uh, just before we begin if you are a newcomer or if you are say joining for the first time or if you have been associated with the indian express explained every morning do consider leaving me a like and sharing this with those of your friends who will find this useful all right let's get started so this is where you connect with me this is my instagram handle and this is my email id where you go ahead and send me any of your doubts that you may so encounter during the course of this discussion right the first newspaper article from the express uh, page the explain page okay india sri lanka ferry service to restart after 40 years opportunities challenges very very important once again why firstly understand it this way it is not just a topic of international relations no that would be a very myopic understanding of this topic this is a topic that is uh, taking a look not just at the international relations but also the history of railways and connectivity between the two countries and at the same time you must be aware that say the gulf of manar or park street that we know it is an ecologically environmentally sensitive area right so we need to understand and take into factor all of those connotations as we seek to understand this so let's look at the uh, basics first the facts of the matter first so passenger ferry service from nagapattinam in tamil nadu to kanke santhurai in jaffna okay this is what is being sought to be connected by a ferry service now this is obviously 40 years ago this existed which means it was closed down something happened and now it is being restarted again okay so once again what you realize is that the connotations of this the meaning of this ferry service opening okay not just people to people connectivity deeper ties cultural ties trade and commerce all of that follows okay without a shadow of a doubt okay it's a very positive move in terms of bringing the two nations much closer together okay so the outcomes bolstering bilateral ties tourism people to people relations trade and commerce fine we know the deal now understand the problems this fact that i have mentioned for you one way ticket costs inr 7000 rupees plus one fact that you you need to keep in mind as we go forward in this discussion right so just the basics so far nagapattinam to jaffna or kanke santhurai which is in jaffna in tamil nadu so these are going to be connected now the history let's look at the history now since 40 years ago this existed what happened where did it go wrong what exactly went wrong please understand this this way somewhere here you have chennai okay now the two places of our interest rameshwaram and dhanushkodi so what was found was earlier you had something called a boat mill okay very very important and in fact a very interesting fact of history also so you had a particular say railway connectivity that came from chennai up until say rameshwaram and dhanushkodi okay and thereafter a passenger would take a ferry service and go on to talai manar which was in sri lanka okay so now what exactly caused this what was the motivation like all things british built it was for economic benefit more so if it was to do with connectivity you know just like the uh, story of indian railways so our books will tell us oh it is to do with people to people connectivity and this and that well that was one part of it the main part was that the britishers wanted access to markets access to ports access to all sorts of facilities that could bolster their loot throughout india right and so the same motivations are found here also what was found was that uh, tea was a very uh, it was a cash crop grown massively in sri lanka sri lanka had a labor shortage okay so sri lanka had tea and they had labor shortage guess what the britishers thought 
that well what we are going to do is go ahead and send cheap labor from India to Sri Lanka and thus came the motivation to build this particular boat mail first, this train service between Egmore, Egmore in Chennai to Rameshwaram and Dhanushkodi. Okay. And thereafter, those passengers would be ferried across the sea, across the Park Strait into Sri Lanka. Correct. Now, what happened was that in 1964, a major cyclone hit Dhanushkodi. Okay. Major, major cyclone hits Dhanushkodi. In fact, the historical records say that Dhanushkodi was turned into a coast town. You know, everything was flattened out. Then it was only left for Rameshwaram to go ahead and bear the load of the passengers who would want to go to Sri Lanka. But then came the civil war in Sri Lanka and thus you found that these two avenues of ferry connectivity between the two nations were halted. Right. Now, the, the implications of this on the Sri Lankan side. Please understand this, that when you have large number of people going from India to Sri Lanka to fill that labor shortage gap, what essentially happened was that in Sri Lanka, resentment grew. You know, one of the prime ministers of Sri Lanka, in fact, if I don't uh, uh, mistake in recalling his name, Solomon Bandar Naike, okay, he goes ahead and says in the 40s itself, that well, this influx of Indian people in Sri Lanka is not good for Sri Lanka. Yes, that say Indians were not just holding the keys of trade and commerce, they also had access to land. And thus this demographic change or this say outsider versus son of the soil conversation started to grow. And thus you found that Sri Lanka was not very keen with the idea of going ahead and resuming this entire ferry service at least say 50 years ago. But now that has changed. Okay. So this ferry service that is resuming is from Dhanushkodi to Talai Manar once again. Okay. Kanke Santurai in Jaffna district. And so understand this now. Indo Ceylon Express or boat mail that would go between Chennai and Colombo via the Tutkudi port. Okay. Passengers from Chennai would get onto the boat mail express. Finally, steam ferry then to Dhanushkodi and then to Talai Manar. This used to happen. So both of these were stopped. Eventually this was due to cyclone and this was due to civil war. Okay. Right. Quite simple. No problems yet. But the problems now that we should understand in terms of the civil service aspirant analysis that is needed for this particular topic. Okay. Let's go ahead and understand the challenges now. So first, here is a bit of factual knowledge for you. The boat that is going to go ahead and or the ferry that is going to go ahead and carry my passengers from India to Sri Lanka and back is named as Cheriyapani. Now, please understand 2023, the problems that will come with this particular project. Okay, number one, you have many stakeholders. You just don't have the external affairs ministry, you have customs, you have Tamil Nadu government, you have Sri Lankan government. Okay, in the past, you must be aware that say almost every session of the parliament of India, okay, invariably a concern is raised by the members of parliament from say the state of Tamil Nadu saying that well our fishermen get arrested by the Sri Lankan government, okay. So in the past we have discussed why is that, that our fishermen engage in something called as dredging or trawlers, they use trawlers to go ahead and engage in dredging, in trawling essentially. Okay, so this is essentially you go ahead and sweep the whole ocean floor, disturb the whole benthic zone of the ocean, the underlying seabed area of the uh, ocean in terms of fishing. Okay, so this is what you do. If this is your boat, okay, here is your net and you go ahead and drag it along the ocean floor. So you just don't carry say the fishes, you carry the larva, you carry the entire benthic resources that are present. Now your environment, little bit of environment knowledge guys. Park Strait, Gulf of Manar, I told you extremely environmentally, ecologically sensitive area. For example, we have the presence of seaweeds there. Okay. We have the presence of corals there. Mangroves are present. Sea grass is present. Do you realize this? Yes. Our famed, our most favorite animal, especially from the exam perspective, the dugong can be found here. So when you realize that these are the key areas of challenges, 
So what effect will a passenger shipping have? Eventually, a passenger ship will discharge some, uh, say, uh, effluent into the uh, ocean water, in the sea water. Yes. Now, it is again diesel powered. So, there will be some, uh, say, pollution there too. Plus, you have this as an ecologically sensitive zone. So, does it make sense to go ahead and have and disturb this particular, say, ecologically sensitive zone by running ships back and forth? That is one consideration that you need to have. Okay. Next is the cost recalibration. Now, you must have seen, I have specifically mentioned that INR 7000 plus rupees is the ticket for one side. Go ahead and compare that after the class ends. Go ahead and compare that with the airfares that exist between, say, Chennai and Colombo. Okay. So, that could be a major, say, turn off for those who would like to use this ferry service. Okay. At the same time, what you find is that in terms of marketing of this ferry service, okay. So, for today, for example, if I want to go ahead and book a ticket, there are 50 apps through which I can go ahead and book an air ticket for myself or a train ticket for myself. But have you ever come across a particular travel portal that will give you the option to book, uh, say, a ferry ticket, you know. You will be surprised to know, in fact, when you do go for your Bharat Darshans, you will realize that ferry services exist from Kolkata to Andaman, from Mumbai to Lakshwadeep, from say, Chennai to uh, Andaman, all of these ferry services exist. But the ticketing uh, uh, process for them is not very easy. So, if you are going to go and make this particular route feasible, you know, if it is going to be used by the public, firstly, you need to go ahead and make sure that firstly, the cost is recalibrated. 7,000 rupees is far too high, far too much. Secondly, the availability and the accessibility that we often talk about, you know, that has to be recalibrated. The tickets should be readily available rather than for someone to go ahead and stand in a line or say use another portal, whatever it is. The marketing needs to be proper, correct? Let's go ahead and understand the other challenges now. The frequency of services. Number one, firstly, it was planned that, well, it will be a daily service, okay? that a ferry shall run back and forth in a distance of what the time period for each side of the journey was roughly around three and a half, four hours. So you could go ahead and take a round trip in a day. But now what is being found is that uh, the frequency of the services has been reduced to thrice a week. So do you realize in terms of the financial viability that comes after the project has been completed, a lot needs to be done. Yes, the project as a standalone could be a good concept, yes, subject to the fact that it does not, say, interfere with the ecological scenario around that sensitive area. But at the same time, you also need to realize that there are certain gaps that you need to fulfill insofar as making sure that this project becomes a reality, a success, okay, and a sensitive environmental zone, okay. It's, a, it's an extremely sensitive environmental zone. For those of you who are watching me live, by the way, Go ahead and tell me very quickly, sea grass and seaweed, okay, one of them is an algae, the other one is a flowering plant. Let me know which one is which very quickly, okay. One of them is an algae, one of them is a plant. Let me know which one is which very quickly in the chat box if you are watching me live. Koda, Bulbul, Ajay, good morning, Namaskar, thank you for joining. Okay, ye aap hume batayega comment box mein. Ye rahe sawal aapke. These are the questions that I have for you. In which state of India will you find the Theri desert? So if you understand say the southwest monsoon, the retreating monsoon, you will also understand that there exists a particular desert in the south side of India. I have given you a major hit. Okay. So we are often told that well India has only certain amount of desert say like the uh, Thar desert or the cold desert that we have in the Ladakh side. But there is also another desert that you need to be aware of. So go ahead, attempt this question. In which state of India will you find the Theri Desert? Rajasthan, Gujarat, Tamil Nadu or both A and B. Next question, sea grass, coral reef, mangroves, seaweed. How many of the above are found in the Gulf of Manar? Meanwhile, with this question, you will also let me know sea grass and seaweed, which of them is a plant and which of them is an algae? You will let me know. Okay. Here is a small homework that I have for you. So this is the ferry service that is now being commissioned. I have given you the say, history. I have given you the facts of the case as well as the challenges that uh, say, arise out of this entire discussion. Okay. 
गो हेड एंड लेट मी नो इफ यू हैव एनी पर्टिकुलर डाउट्स आई एल बी हैप्पी टू एड्रेस दम ठीक है ऑल राइट ऑल राइट श्रीराम लेट मी नो लेट मी नो वेरी नाइस ठीक है सो बिफोर वी गो फॉरवर्ड माई फ्रेंड्स दिस इज बाई द वे क्लोजिंग ऑन द ट्वेंटी थर्ड ऑफ ऑगस्ट वेर आर जी एस फाउंडेशन कॉर्स इफ यू आर समन हुज प्रिपेयरिंग फॉर द सिविल सर्विस नॉट जस्ट फॉर नेक्स्ट ईयर बट फॉर द ईयर आफ्टर दैट और द ईयर आफ्टर दैट इफ यू आर अ लॉन्ग टर्म प्लेयर येस दिस इज द राइट कोर्स फॉर यू सो इफ यू आर समन हुज से इन द थर्ड ईयर ऑफ यूर इंजीनियरिंग और इन द सेकेंड ईयर ऑफ यूर से ग्रेजुएशन कोर्स कंसिडर साइनिंग अप फॉर दिस द क्लासेस कैन बी टाइम्ड एंड से यू कैन गो हेड एंड प्रोग्रेस एट योर ओन पेस येस you get all the paraphernalia that comes with say a normal course but more importantly you have access to mentors quality faculty whose main agenda is to make sure that you understand the concept and you have ample strength ample ability to solve questions because my friends just studying will not make sure that you clear your prelims or your mains yes you need to master the art of solving mcqs as well as answer writing and that is the main focus here so go ahead and connect with this more importantly this extended validity that you get will provides you with the opportunity to time yourself pace yourself at your own pace okay so well you'll find the uh, sign up uh, link in the description box below once you do decide to sign up use the code ba live because well you get allotted to my batch which means we go ahead you and i go ahead and connect together in terms of geography environment ir csat english all of that will be taken care of exhaustively by me as well as the other subjects by the esteemed faculty that we have here at study iq ias right so the course beginning on the 23rd of october at 8 am make haste don't delay now the second topic that i had told you the global implications very very important pay attention okay so this is not to be found in the indian express by the way but this is one particular topic that you need to be aware of absolutely now the panama canal okay connects the atlantic the pacific for those of you who have no idea about where the panama canal is it is in the north part of south america between say north america and south america okay so the main part that you need to understand panama canal connects pacific and atlantic theek hai aage badhte hain now it is the world's one of the world's busiest maritime shipping passageways okay in terms of its contribution to global trade and development 6% of global trade goes from here now please understand this if you were to not go from here you are essentially looking at going right alongside here so this is where your panama canal is if panama canal did not exist then i would have to follow the magellan route which is to go via the drake passage the cape of well good hope or good horn cape of horn you will let me know very quickly there are two capes that students often get confused at one is cape of good hope okay and one is cape horn so in terms of the panama canal you are looking to go ahead and traverse this entire area rather than just going straight okay so once you have panama canal that you know about okay please understand the facts it is fed by a gatun lake g a t u n gatun lake so which means that canal water comes from a fresh water source my gatun lake okay now this because of say 6% of global trade it is obviously a major shipping channel but what we realize is my friends that this is under severe stress now you might ask me sir why how can a canal be under stress well here is a bit of common sense because it is being fed by by gatun lake which is a fresh water source which means it has to do something with rainfall and availability of water and one concept that you must be aware of now that in the indian uh, scenario we have discussed thoroughly is el nino our old friend el nino makes a comeback in this particular concept but before i discuss el nino let's see how the panama canal works thoda sa dhyan dijiye abhi now what you find is say from the atlantic ocean side here is my ship that goes in and you see these individual compartments so what you find is that to make sure that my ship goes from say the atlantic side to the pacific side you have these particular locks that are designed now the water is fed into the locks compartments chambers as the water level rises so does the ship alongside it archimedes okay so does the ship rise alongside it once the ship has gone to a sufficient height 
it crosses the Gatun Lake and then across the whole Panama Canal. Please understand, once again, I'll repeat it for you. Once you have a ship coming from the Atlantic side, it enters here and thus you find that water level is raised individually, making sure that it is able to go ahead and traverse this distance. Okay. Two important lakes here. One is Gatun Lake, the primary lake. And then you have the Mira Flores Lake that is on the Pacific Ocean side. Now, one thing that you need to understand. Once my ship enters from the Atlantic side, okay, let this GIF go back. I'll show you once again. Here, once this ship enters, take a look at this water here. The water in my first chamber. So what happens? Here is my ship going from the Atlantic side to Pacific. Here is your first container, first lock. You have raised the water level after which the ship has passed. What happens to this water level? Because this again has to go down if my second ship is to come. Agreed? So what happens here is that in the first compartment, the first lock where the water level is already raised so that my first ship can cross through, now that water needs to be drained out so as to enable the second ship to pass through. Now the concept. My Panama Canal fed by Gatun Lake. Okay. And I have loss of fresh water every time a ship passes through. And I have told you, our old friend El Nino is in operation. El Nino means drought-like conditions, less rainfall. So the fact that you are losing fresh water with each ship passing through and at the same time you are experiencing El Nino, which means that there is water shortage. Obviously, do not, do not forget that people also live there. They also need their fresh water. Yes, the Gatun Lake is not exclusively for, say, making sure that our ships cross through. It also needs to sustain the local population, which is why you find that because of El Nino, the warming of the Pacific Ocean, yes, this is leading to drought-like conditions in the Panama Canal area, in fact, uh, South America. And thus you find that now the problem so arises that the lake, the water that needed to be there to enable my ships to cross through, well, the water level is low. Now the concept of physics, buoyancy. Okay, buoyancy. That if your ship is heavy, and if your water level is shallow, your ship will sink. It will, it will go and say, just lodge itself at the bottom. You need a sufficient depth of water for high volume container ships. Yes or no? Correct? Now the problem, you are losing fresh water, you do not have rainfall, and at the same time, your ships are heavy. Because let's not forget, this particular area, the Panama Canal area, seeks to connect, well, my entire North American continent, especially the western side, and say my Japan and South Korea, with Europe. It's the more feasible way, it's the more feasible area. Thus you find that now my trade and commerce is taking a hit. Earlier, if you are say a, a 100 kg ship, for example, let's understand this, simplest manner. If your 100 kg worth of goods could go in one ship from say Pacific to Atlantic, now, because of drought-like conditions, you find that it can carry only, say, 35 to 40 kgs. Which means, once again, my trade and commerce is seeing a downfall. Now, do you understand that the problem of Panama Canal is a product of climate change? It's a project, product, firstly, of natural weather uh, phenomena. Okay? And thus, it is leading to a hit in one of the most critical sea passages in the entire world. Okay? Now let's understand this. Now that you've understood the concept, okay, let's look at this. This is the entire uh, method, by the way. I'll share this PDF on my Telegram channel. Do make sure to have a look, okay? Because not many students seem to be aware of the working of the Panama Canal. It's one of the most, uh, most famous engineering marvels, you know, that humankind came up with this concept, you know, earlier. So you might think, okay, why did they not just cut across the whole canal? Now, why did they not? Obviously, it's a very narrow strip of land that you see here. It's a very narrow strip of land. What was the need to build a canal? Why couldn't you just go ahead and say build a, a passageway, connect Atlantic and Pacific? Well, countries did try that. But eventually, the topography, the variability of topography, disease, all of that meant that this was a far expensive proposition. Too many people died to attempt 
that particular idea. Then the United States government came in and designed this particular locks and compartment chamber complex, uh, see this whole concept and thus you find that exists till this date. Now, let's go ahead and understand what I'm telling you in terms of the climate change concept guys, okay. So firstly, Panama is one of the world's wettest countries, okay. One of the world's wettest countries experiencing drought. If that is not climate change, well what is, okay. So it provides plenty of fresh water for Gatun Lake and the canal. Obviously, so much of rainfall comes, my lake gets filled, my Panama Canal functions at 100% efficiency. But El Nino is in operation. And more importantly, the frequency of El Nino has been on the rise. Okay. Earlier, if you experienced it, say, once every seven years, now you find it that it is getting, uh, say, El Nino can be observed almost every three years or four years. Thus, you find that because of the lack of water that Gatun Lake is experiencing, Panama Canal sees lesser number of ships and lesser volume of cargo, both, okay. So obviously, firstly, there was a huge traffic jam. If you will uh, believe me, the Council of Foreign Relations, from where I've picked this particular article, CFR, okay, they mentioned that, well, there was a log jam, a traffic jam of close to 200 plus ships, all waiting to transport goods and services some with perishables, okay, those that have le less shelf life. So this is, again, look at the water level that I'm showing to you, straight away showing a downward trend. So now mankind, humankind is confronted with a problem. Here is a major shipping route that is now under stress. What should we do? Well, what we do we do? We go ahead and design our alternatives, okay. Let me go ahead and say, uh, revisit. Karuna, good morning, how are you? Welcome, welcome. Do you have any doubts? Let me know, okay? I hope the chat is working fine. Right, so let's look at the alternatives now. Most importantly is number three here, okay? This particular one, which is going to get operational this December, okay? The Isthmus of Tehuan Tepec route, okay? It's called the Inter-Oceanic Corridor of the Isthmus of Tehuan Tepec. Inter-Oceanic corridor of the isthmus, very very important by the way, because again this is going to get inaugurated in December of Tehuan Tepec, which is by the way a Mexican project, okay. And so what does Mexico do? Mexico does the most obvious, something that requires just a little bit of common sense. Mexico says, go ahead, bring your ships from here. I'm going to provide you with a railway line and so you can go ahead and traverse this side as well as give you access to the American market. So this is the Tehuan Tepec project by the Mexican government, okay. This is going to go ahead and open in 2023 December. Now the other ones, number two is my Lake Nicaragua route, okay. What is again being seen here is, this is under the control of the or in fact being funded by the Chinese, okay. The Chinese have gone ahead and funded the Nicaragua project, but like with most things Chinese, it has not seen the light of the day yet. In fact, the latest update says that this project has been shelved, okay, which means no progress has been made so far. Similarly, you're also looking at another route that is the Gulf of Uraba route, okay. Gulf of Uraba here, you're looking at the Darien route, all of these are, say, under works, but not nearing completion. The only feasible, say, alternative to Panama Canal right now is the Isthmus of Tehuan Tepec, that particular railway project by the Mexican government. Now, these are the more conventional, say, alternatives that are being developed. Now, I told you at the beginning of the discussion that, well, say, climate change is a factor in so far as my under availability of Panama Canal for trade and commerce is concerned. Guess what? The same climate change is also giving me another alternative sea route, another alternative trade route. What is that alternative trade route? Here it is, my friends. Have a look at this now. The Northern Passage, okay? The North West Passage, which means the route that I'm talking about is this particular route. 
okay now because of climate change what you find is that this entire area north of say alaska yes around say my polar areas is seeing a lot of ice thinning ice melting is being observed which is why you find that a lot of say uh, trade routes sea routes are now opening in fact a trial run has been conducted and with little bit of help of navigation systems you are able to go ahead and make use of the northwest passage okay very very important that it is to for you to realize that it is climate change that is thinning the ice and thus this route between atlantic and pacific is opening all you need is a little bit of navigation system help and you are able to go ahead and traverse this entire area the other alternative is obviously to go via the drake passage because again this area is currently stressed so the more viable alternatives one obviously is the tehuantepec okay the viable alternatives right now tehuantepec drake passage which means the south side of south america and the northwest passage which is the north side of northern america these three are currently considered to be the most feasible alternatives to my panama canal project theek hai right go ahead help me with these questions my friends question number 3 use of panama canal helps avoid the long route through the cape of good hope like i told you two things that you need to be aware of cape horn and good hope okay one of them passes through the south side of south america the other one passes through or is located at the south side of the african continent do not get confused there okay the second question the northern sea route is an alternative to panama canal okay so in terms let me just go ahead and fulfill this knowledge gap for you so this is one particular passage the northwest passage of late if you were following your news you must have seen that india went ahead and was part of the uh, eef meeting in vladivostok okay where we were represented by a minister in russia why was that because again the same concept the same thinning of ice is also been observed on the russian side the whole baltic sea kara sea laptev sea chukchi sea east siberian sea yes all of that is seeing a lot of ice thinning and thus russia also finds that the area the, the uh, nearby polar area between it and the poles that area is also opening up as a, a major sea route which is why you find that the eastern economic framework or the forum yes eef the meeting of which was held in vladivostok india's interests lie in accessing that particular area that is the north eastern passage or the northern passage okay so don't get confused between northwest passage and north east passage theek hai next how many of the above are part of the panama canal project gatun lake mira flores lake huron lake great slave lakes you will let me know your answers in the comment box as you always do if you have any particular doubts make sure that you go ahead and uh, well those who are watching me live you can ask me here or for those who are watching the recording later go ahead and connect with me on my email id or my instagram and i'll try and help you out with your doubt asap right okay before we go forward my friends the third topic that i will uh, put before you if you haven't decided on your optional yet and here is a very sincere advice that i'll give for you if you haven't started on your optional yet this is in fact the last call okay ideally a candidate is expected to at least finish 50 to 60% of both of their papers of the optional by say december 31st why because after the prelims you have limited amount of time which you should rather focus on answer writing of the topics that you have learned previously okay the knowledge building has to be done before prelims after prelims and uh, say between before mains it is all to do with say the uh, augmentation of the knowledge that you have the interlinkages have to be thought of okay so if you have not yet decided on your optional do that first and if you want to go ahead and seek some guidance here is one particular alternative for you the same concept you are getting extended periods of validity affordable price different subjects psir sociology geography anthro maths p pabad history philosophy and hindi sahitya okay go ahead look at the faculty profiles some of the most well known faculties are a part of this particular project go ahead sign up for this too 
and when you do use decide to sign up well you know which code to use for okay so that we can connect together in terms of your optional subjects too right was the panama canal discussion helpful guys now will you be able to explain to anyone how the panama canal works and what are the problems it is facing and what are the alternatives that are there to panama canal okay here is a very important concept not just from the prelims perspective but also from the mains perspective that you have just learned okay so if you understand the way we communicate here do not forget to leave me a like my friends okay now let's go ahead and understand sinai peninsula because in the past my friends sinai peninsula golan heights upsc loves these particular topics and unfortunately students do get confused okay why because it's mapping based mapping takes a bit of work mapping wants you to go ahead and revisit that area time and again so that you remember the map okay so let's look at it sinai peninsula a triangle shaped peninsula in egypt's north east desert now if you look at it the important parts here on one side you have the gulf of suez here you have the gulf of aqaba why is the gulf of aqaba important because what you find is that it gives me the say it it separates my egypt with jordan okay which means that i do not have a direct land border that exists between sinai peninsula and jordan okay up north you obviously find the mediterranean let's have a look at it one by one firstly it connects asia and africa so just like my panama canal was connecting say atlantic ocean and pacific ocean my uh, sinai peninsula connects africa and asia okay the boundary is very very important this is where the mapping questions get asked from mediterranean to the north okay israel and gaza strip in the news to the east here is your gaza strip here sorry here is your gaza strip okay then you have the suez canal which connects the african and mediterranean halves of egypt which is located to the west of sinai peninsula here okay and to the southwest you have the gulf of aqaba which is obviously you have the red sea there the gulf of aqaba present there okay very very important because well firstly this has been in the news secondly upsc previously has asked several times questions on golan heights several times questions on this particular area so i would suggest to make sure that you revisit this particular map time and again to make sure that you have exact information about where the mediterranean is where the gulf of aqaba is where the gulf of suez is where the red sea is yes only then will you be able to comprehensively say that yes i have covered my middle east and the particular conflict that is happening okay it's just not enough to know about say the history of palestine and the history of hamas and the history of israel that's obviously one bit but uh, the returns for that concept in the prelims may be limited in the prelims you are much more likely to go ahead and get asked about this particular question okay so pay extreme attention here once again i'll repeat it for you you have sinai peninsula a triangular shaped desert connecting asia and africa you have gulf of suez to the uh, what west gulf of aqaba to the east mediterranean to the north gaza strip to the say what north east okay so make sure that you have absolute clarity over this particular map right here is another question for you how i love these questions question number 5 israel is bordered by syria lebanon golan heights west bank jordan gaza strip and egypt is it or is it not okay and statement b the gulf of aqaba is a large gulf at the northern tip of the red sea east of the sinai peninsula and west of the arabian mainland identify the correct statements okay a pretty simple question if you have followed the map that i just showed you the next question syria jordan turkey israel which of the above shares borders with golan heights okay once again go ahead look at the map that i've shared with you and these questions should be relatively easy for you theek hai curious good morning good morning how are you theek hai so that was the three topics that i have for you but before that let's go ahead and look at the questions of yesterday now see on a daily basis we end up doing how many questions close to 12 13 questions in a span of 40 45 odd minutes and that should be the focus even if you are looking to read your newspapers yourself okay so let's look at this question which of the above are grounds for divorce in india okay renunciation which means you go ahead and renounce your worldly affairs 
devote your life to a particular faith, spirituality. In that case, if you have a partner, can the partner claim that you have deserted the marital obligations and claim divorce? Absolutely. He or she can. Okay. So here is one. Adultery, obviously. 100%. If someone engages in promiscuous behavior, well, adultery is a particular, say, a ground on which divorce can be granted. Okay. Imprisonment. Now, the law says that if you are imprisoned for 7 plus years, okay, which is like a major imprisonment, in that case, sufficient ground exists for grant of divorce. Okay, so imprisonment too. And alcoholism is obviously one of the major say, uh, evils of our society, not just in urban areas but also in rural areas. And thus you find that the court is more than happy to grant say a divorce when it comes to alcoholism related cases. Okay, firstly obviously it is suggested that you go ahead and engage in a bit of rehabilitation, you know, go ahead and engage in a bit of course correction. But if that does not work out, the course will the court will grant you divorce on the grounds of alcoholism too. So the above are all of the above are my correct answers here. Now we discussed Islamic law, we discussed on what grounds can Muslim women go ahead and claim their rights of divorce. Okay. So Khula is to do with the unilateral grant of divorce. Okay from the woman to the man, okay, and Mubarat is to do with the mutual divorce because once again in Islamic law you find that marriage is a contract and if the terms and conditions of the contract are not fulfilled then the contract shall be annulled and that is what Mubarat is. Fusk is obviously the external authority where you have say a judicial body or a quasi judicial body that goes and uh, say you know, discusses this whole concept of divorce. So, which of the above are incorrectly matched? Obviously, these are interchanged, which means A and B. Right? Let's look at this question. Question number three. Termination of pregnancy up to 20 weeks requires no advice or opinion of doctors. Unfortunately, no. Okay? Medical termination of pregnancy, MTP, the amendment of which was carried out in 2021, it tells me that 20 weeks, up till 20 weeks, if a woman wants to go ahead and get MTP, the advice of one doctor is needed. The supervision and advice of one doctor is needed. This is incorrect. And prenatal gender screening is allowed in India on certain grounds. Unfortunately, no. Okay. Prenatal gender screening basically means that you go ahead and find out the gender of the fetus that the woman is carrying. Now, this was outlawed, illegal in India. Why once again? Because we had a skewed sex ratio. Yes, female feticide was and in fact is to a large degree still prevalent, which is why to negate that from the say uh, supply side or the say structural reforms that were needed, this was one of the key steps that have been taken, which is why if you ever go ahead and say uh, go to a particular imaging center or a radiologist, you will find that written in bold words there that do not ask the gender, this, this will not be communicated to you. In fact, if you ever have been with a pregnant woman inside one of those imaging centers, you will find that the imaging is done in such a way that even the most keenest of eyes cannot go ahead and catch the gender of the particular fetus. Okay. So identify the incorrect statements. Well, both are incorrect here. Okay. Now bring out two differences between medical termination of pregnancy in India and USA and I was extremely pleased with some of the answers. Very, very pleased because what you have done is some of the students have gone ahead and researched that I expect you to do for 5-10 minutes. And so one of the most obviously uh, the key difference is of fetal viability that we discussed yesterday. In the Indian context, the fetal viability is much more wider because we are looking at not just heartbeat but we are also looking at the ability to survive outside the womb. Okay. Whereas in the US context, it is just to do with say presence or say when you find the heartbeat, it is considered to be a viable fetus. Okay. And the second major difference, if I were to put it for you, is obviously that in India's case, besides obviously what we discussed yesterday, please understand that the legislation for medical termination of pregnancy in India 
did not come because of a social movement that came here. Even today, you find that in US you have the whole conversation of pro-life versus pro-choice. Yes. So there's a social movement that is going and say driving my whole legislation there. But in India's case, what you find is that this was essentially firstly to do with the population control. Now, ideally, we would have said that, well, if you want to go ahead and control your population, make the whole laws more lax. But because there is a say, commitment, a responsibility of the state towards health, remember the directive principles of state policy, okay, which is why you find that the social movement connotation does not apply here. Instead, it is a direct connotation of the direct, uh, directive principles of state policy that uh, put an obligation on the state to go ahead and make such laws framework that will protect the health of its citizens. Okay. In that case, this is the second difference. The third difference, obviously, in India's case, you find that women is given more preference, the right of the women is given more preference, whereas that may not be the case because again in the US, each state is free to interpret the law in their own manner. So the major differences that I have brought out for you, especially from the perspective of a mains question. Okay. Let's look at question number five. How many of the above are not a part of the public sector units under railways? Yesterday we discussed about rights, R-I-T-E-S that has now become a Navratna company, okay. So what are the other PSUs under railways? Indian Railway Finance Corporation, which gives the money for these railway projects, yes. It is also listed on the stock exchange. Indian Railway Construction, IRCTC, which obviously you and I both know about very well. These three are part of the railways, whereas NHAI is to do with my MORTH, Ministry of Road Transport and Highways, the minister which is Sri Nitin Gadkari. Okay, so how many of the above PSUs are not part of the PSUs under railways? Just one, just one, that is NHAI. Now, which of the above are not necessary prerequisites to be classified as a Navratna? Okay, number one, firstly, you need a positive rating status. Okay, which means an MOU, it basically shows your level of corporate governance. Okay, so you need to be having a positive rating status there. A net profit of 5,000 crore plus in the last three years is required to be classified as a Navratna. For a Maharatna, obviously that figure is much higher. And prior classification as a Mini Ratna, one, is necessary if you want to go ahead and get promoted from Mini Ratna to a Navratna. So these three are required for a company to be classified as a Navratna, which means none of the above is my answer here because the question asks me not. Okay, many of you made that question, do not make it again, right? <clears throat> so that concludes this uh, session I had for you. My individuals, Neeraja, Harshit, Lekam, Crystal, Revisit, Pooja, Koder, Vaishnavi, Tanish, Karuna, Preet, Robin, Ayush, Rahul, Akshay, Subhudeep, Gangesh and Target CSE. Well done firstly, okay. Besides just one question that uh, some of you might have got incorrect, majority of the uh, people, the names that are present here, they have gotten their answers absolutely correctly. Okay, all six, seven, eight questions done uh, thoroughly and this is what is expected, you know. And for those of you who do watch this session, but say never engage with these questions, okay. Here is a pro tip. Since uh, I am someone who's been through the process, you can take my advice or leave it, that's up to you. But if you are going to go ahead and study for the examination, especially from the current affairs perspective. If you read an article for say 15 minutes, which is far too much by the way, but if you read an article for 15 minutes, you should look to solve questions for at least five to seven minutes related to it. Unless and until you're not solving questions, you will forget what you read and which means, well, you have wasted your time, okay? Eventually, your selection is based on your transition, your ability to convert that knowledge into question solving ability, okay? Make sure that it's a key thrust area. And if you want to go ahead and answer the questions that I have for you today, well, that will be most welcome. I'd most appreciate that. Okay. So that concludes uh, this morning's Indian Express Explained. We discussed three very important topics. Okay. So if you understood the discussion, firstly, do not hesitate to leave me a like. I'd really, really, really appreciate it. Okay. Share this with those of your friends who will find this conversation useful because, well, the whole entire point of this 45 odd minutes early morning is not to give you unnecessary gyan, okay? Your time is precious and it needs to be respected, 
Okay. So I'll see you tomorrow morning, 8 a.m. once again. Uh, and uh, stay updated with the latest news related to my upcoming sessions on my Telegram channel. Okay. You can go ahead and connect with me here. And I hope to see many of you connect in the future in the next edition of Indian Express Explained. Until then, it's a wrap. Thanks for watching. Have a wonderful day. And more importantly, have a productive day, my friends. All right. I'll see you. Bye. Good day.